Hey everyone, I'm Brett. Welcome to Nightwood Guns. Today we are going to be reviewing the Q Sugar Weasel in 300 Blackout. This is actually my personal go-to home defense gun that sits next to my bed, so if you see it covered in pet hair, you'll know why. And we're going to be going over what sets the Sugar Weasel apart from other AR-style pistols chambered in 300 Blackout whether or not it's worth the price, and if the rumors that you have heard on the absolute cesspool hellscape of Reddit are true when it comes to these guns being overpriced, overhyped, and the owner being a douchebag. So do you want the truth? You can't handle the truth! Then this is the video you're looking for. Man, if you like this video and the other videos that I make, check the link in the description below. Got a brand new Patreon over there. Your support is so appreciated. If you really want to make my day, I'm an author and I wrote two kick-ass short novels that are on Amazon in the link in the description below. Check them out, leave reviews, I'll be forever grateful. Now on to the review. So what is the truth? The truth... <laughs> the truth is that these mini cinnamon rolls that I got at Costco are probably laced with cocaine and will be the end of me. Call the paramedics. Oh my god. So here's the truth. The Q Sugar Weasel and Q products in general rock. So what exactly is the Sugar Weasel? Well, the guy who, you know, created 300 Blackout and then created the Honey Badger, but it really didn't come to fruition, started up Q, uh, he brought the Honey Badger to market and it's a 300 Blackout SBR, but you know, in our case for civilians, pistols, unless you go the NFA route. But that thing is like $3,000. This guy is the poor man's honey badger. If you consider dishing out around $2,000 for a gun, making you a poor. So the sugar weasel and the honey badger are chambered in 300 blackout. Now, why would you pick 300 blackout over 556? Well, 300 blackout is a very versatile round in its super sonic offerings. It mimics very similar to a 7.62x39 or an AK round. And then its subsonic offering performs about like a 9mm FMJ, but it is super quiet. So you can have a magazine of supersonic and a magazine of subsonic and have two guns in one. You have a suppressed 9mm and you have essentially an AK-47. If you want to get a 300 blackout for home defense though, please use supersonic rounds because the subsonic, like I said, is like poking holes with a 9mm FMJ but the can still take some of the sting off of the supersonic rounds, but that's gonna perform the way that you are going to want to in human tissue defensively. So what is the difference between the Honey Badger and the Sugar Weasel? Well, first of all, the Honey Badger has a proprietary billet lower receiver, a proprietary collapsing stock or brace, and a better trigger and a different charging handle. The Sugar Weasel is the economy version of the Honey Badger with a forged M16 spec lower receiver, a standard buffer tube, standard charging handle, and your typical SB tactical pistol brace. It also normally comes with an ALG trigger, which is essentially a mil spec trigger with about half the grit. These changes knock the price of the Sugar Weasel down about $1,000 less than the Honey Badger, and you're still getting identical performance to the Honey Badger, it's just not as much of a flex to own. You're still getting the seven inch, one in five twist barrel that the Honey Badger has, that is a fast twist that helps stabilize subsonic heavier bullets, and uh, some people think that that faster twist is going to hurt the performance of higher velocity supersonic rounds. However, with a barrel this short, it doesn't have much of an effect. In fact, this groups extremely well with supersonic ammunition. Also, like the Honey Badger, you are getting the six inch M-Lock handguard, and you still get the Honey Badger look with the clear anodized finish. In addition, you are still getting the adjustable gas block, which you can see right there to help tune the gun to the ammunition. However, this has run every subsonic and supersonic round that I've put through it at just the factory setting. I haven't even had to touch it, but it's nice that it's there in case you need it. Something that both the Honey Badger and the Sugar Weasel have going for them is they are both lightweight and they are both short. The Sugar Weasel is just a hair longer than the Honey Badger, but they're both the same weight. And one of the ways they achieve that on the Sugar Weasel is they chopped off the forward assist. So just know in order to save weight, that forward assist is gone. If you are in love with forward assists, this is not the gun for you. But in my opinion, any malfunction that you would need to slam the forward assist home to clear, I would probably just cycle it anyways to clear it. 
So it's no skin off my back. In a package this small, when you're getting a compact firearm like this, I personally would rather save the weight. And of course it has a Picatinny rail on the top because if it didn't, that would just be unacceptable in this day and age. It's got this small reptilian grip that just kind of complements how compact of a gun that it is. And it has a Magpul oversized trigger guard. So I don't know, kind of a nice little touch. Cheap part, but makes a little bit of difference. Better than mil-spec, right? So while I take a break to eat another one of these delicious Costco petite cinnamon rolls, uh, this is your opportunity to hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you take a look at my subscriber count, 6,000 is pretty good, but I think we can do better than that, so let YouTube know that more people should see my videos by liking, subscribing, and commenting. Now the best thing, in my opinion, that Q has put out is the Cherry Bomb muzzle attachment for a can. So this right here is the Cherry Bomb. Now this is not a flash hider, and it's not even the best muzzle break in the world. However, it's my favorite way to attach a can to a rifle. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. The way the Cherry Bomb is designed, it has a tapered shoulder, which uh, basically guarantees concentricity, so you'll never get a baffle strike. On top of that, it's also quick on, quick off. With the taper, the can doesn't move and it won't back off when you're shooting it. The Cherry Bomb also acts kind of as a sacrificial blast chamber, so it's going to protect your can. The best thing about Q products is they're basically just easy mode. If you don't like dealing with bullshit like tuning your rifle to function with both subsonic and supersonic ammo by changing out buffer springs and tuning the gas settings, if you don't want to deal with the possibility of baffle strikes because you didn't put your can on correctly, Q has just made it easy. Yeah, you're paying a little more, but you're getting just a plug and play ready to go option from the factory. So the Cherry Bomb is designed to be used with the Q Trash Panda, which is their shorter 30 cal can, and the Thunder Chicken, which is just the longer version of the 30 cal can. And it just very easily goes on there. Piece of cake. Just hand tight and you are ready to go. Because of the design of the taper, this can is not going to back off while you're shooting it. And like I said, it's easy on, easy off. All you do is give it a little bit of a turn and off it comes. You just obviously wanna make sure that it's not hot. It's actually really interesting when you're shooting this thing suppressed with the Trash Panda or the Thunder Chicken because you get all of this carbon buildup around this front part of the Cherry Bomb, but the threads remain completely clean. It is totally sealed off. The thing actually works. Now, just so you can get an idea of how this thing runs unsuppressed, here's some footage of me shooting supersonics through this thing without a can. So that's how the Cherry Bomb acts as a muzzle break. It's okay. And this is how quiet this thing runs, even with a shorter can like the Trash Panda. Now I'm sure you're hearing names like Trash Panda, Thunder Chicken, Honey Badger, Sugar Weasel, and if you're not used to Q products, you're like, well, the marketing strategy at Q, I think, is to target millennials with too much money, people who wish they were millennials with too much money, and viewers of Tim Pool's podcast. Did you used to kiss the rail and do some sweet kick flips, homie? Well, I know I sure did, so this marketing really got me. If you're someone who used to play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, then you're definitely gonna wanna buy yourself some Q merch. So, that being said, I know there are probably some people watching this video like, the Sugar Weasel is $2,000. I can get a 300 blackout pistol for way cheaper than that and build one for even less. Now, I got this Sugar Weasel about three-ish years ago, back when it was like $1,500 or $1,600, and I feel like I got my money's worth for that. Um, the $1,800, $2,000, man, we're really, we're skirting the line there. Now, I'm sure a part of the premium of this gun is it has the Honey Badger look, and it's coming from Q, who also makes the Honey Badger. And the Honey Badger is a culture gun. It's kind of like a Jeep Wrangler. It's a culture car. It really shouldn't cost as much as it does, but it is what it is. Just know that if you're gonna pay the premium, you're getting a quality product that doesn't make excuses. Now you know what my channel, you get real takes. So I'm gonna tell you the stuff that's not so great. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, this thing just does have a standard AR-15 lower for the most part. And because of that, it doesn't have the fit and finish of the Honey Badger. After putting a ton of rounds through it, the upper will start to loosen up from the lower, just like a lot of other AR-15s. And of course, there are aftermarket things you can do to take the wiggle out of the upper, but 
doesn't really affect the gun much. Also with the clear coat anodized finish, um, it does show off manufacturing flaws that are cosmetic. So just be aware that in order to get this honey badger look, um, you are gonna run into some problems from the factory just cosmetically. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, right there. Yeah, those things came from the factory. So it just it kind of shows cosmetic flaws. I think there's a couple in the magwell too, but. So just know with this clear coat anodized finish that gives it kind of that gold honey badger look, it's gonna show some cosmetic flaws in manufacturing. I bought this thing to use it, so it's gonna get marked up anyways. Other than those two things, which I consider to be non-issues for the most part, the only negative I would say about the Sugar Weasel is the trigger. The ALG trigger is certainly better than your run of the mill, mill spec trigger. Um, but it still has that mil spec weight and even though it's half the grit of a mil spec trigger it's still got some crunch in it it was like night and day swapping it out for the geisley but when i looked at the price of the honey badger and i looked at the price of the sugar weasel and i thought about how they would both perform identically on the range i opted for the version that was a thousand dollars less and i would just need to buy a geisley trigger but now that this thing has an msrp of two thousand dollars and street price is around arraigned it's around, it's around $1,800. The street price is around $1,800. I really do think that it should come with a better trigger. So that's really the only negative that I have on this gun. It's the only complaint that I have. Other than that, with the Q Sugar Weasel, Weasel? With the Q Sugar Weasel, you're getting quite a little pistol here. But other than the trigger, you are getting a quality AR pistol out of the box with an adjustable gas system chambered at 300 blackout with the best silencer attachment system available in my opinion. Now when I set out to get a 300 blackout pistol with a can, um, I just didn't really have a lot of time to worry about which one's good, which one would work, what do I have to do to this one, how do I have to tune this one, what can should I get, what suppressor attachment system do I get, am I gonna get baffle strikes, I definitely didn't have the time to build one out on my own. So after doing research, I saw the Q Sugar Weasel and how easy it was just to plug in the play. I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna get the Sugar Weasel and the Trash Panda and just call it a day. And I knew I was paying a bit of a premium for that, but I honestly have no regrets. It's just easy and it takes a lot of the stress out of it. Nothing is more frustrating when you drop a lot of money into something and it doesn't work or you get a can and you get a baffle strike or something like that. Having the peace of mind that Q products just make it easy was the deciding factor for me. Now, can you get a 300 blackout AR pistol for less than this that works? Yeah, probably, but you know what? Q just makes it easy and it's one of those things where I had just been running into a lot of guns with quality control issues that I was struggling with and I was just so done with the BS. So I got the easy option for a premium and it was worth every penny. So if the Sugar Weasel is on your radar, uh, it gets a stamp of approval from me. If you have the Honey Badger on your radar, that gets a stamp of approval from me too. But if you get the Honey Badger, it's either because you're a collector and you want it or you want to flex it because the Sugar Weasel does everything that the Honey Badger does for less. So are Q products overpriced for what they are? Eh, maybe a little bit, but it was a premium I was willing to pay to make things easy. Is the guy that owns Q a douchebag? To be honest, I don't care. If he is pro 2A and is making quality products, then what do I care if he's a douchebag? I mean, I have a communist slave labor made iPhone in my pocket. So if Q's marketing annoys you, if you don't like the guy that owns it, simple, do not buy one. But if you are interested in one, I can assure you, they make quality stuff. Don't forget to check the link in the description below for my Patreon if you would like to see more videos. I'd love to see your support over there. And if you're looking for something awesome to read, my books are on Amazon, also in the link in the description below. If you wanna help this channel grow for free, just like open up a bunch of my videos and other tabs and just mute them all and let them run. YouTube gimps my channel because they don't like gun content, so we can kind of trick the algorithm by having a lot of watch time on my videos. It helps the algorithm kind of scoop up and revive some of my videos that don't have a lot of views. So if you got a couple of minutes to open up those tabs, well, I'd appreciate it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, taking a look at the Q Sugar Weasel today. It was great seeing you guys again, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Brett, and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out. Yeah.